Assalamu alaikum, my dear sisters and my brothers, welcome to part 6 from the magic and now we are talking about the kingdom of Suleiman and the jinn and the shayateen and some of what they can and cannot do. I will pick up from where we left at the end of my previous talk about a shaitan decorating, promising and all that kind of stuff. And in the Quran, Allah has established one truth which we need to pay attention to. I've already mentioned it, but it never harms to come back to it. The only one, this ability is given to the shaitan and his direct people that work with him, of the jinn. Those who are going to have fire for eternity with him. The reason being, because Allah knows what goes on behind the scenes of the battle between uh, the jinn and us and all that kind of stuff. So what Allah did, he, to allow shaitan to work, a shaitan needed access to us. But the only access to us are two things. There is not a third one. He can see us, that's number one, and he can whisper to us, that's number two. End of it. A shaitan cannot hold your hand and make you kill somebody, for example. It never happens. A shaitan cannot uh, influence you and force you to do something. Impossible. All that a shaitan does is the following. He sees you. He has access to all of us. I will come back to the point who goes under that exception. He has access to all of us. He can see all of them. And then he whispers. How he whispers, he whispers in your mind, in your ears, in your head, underneath your armpit, it doesn't matter. But what he whispers gets to us and it becomes to us like a thought. And that thought will beg of an action. And then we do that deed. Allah stated this in the Quran, in Surah Al-A'raf, that's Surah number 7, in the Ayah 27. Speaking of a shaitan, Allah says, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ he does indeed see you. Huwa, him, i.e. Iblis, a shaitan, the chief shaitan. Waqabiluhu, and his clan, his, uh, his people, the group that works with him, his tribe. Min haythu la tarahum, from where you do not see them. And then Allah will speak now and he will say with what a shaitan see and what he can do, i.e. whispers, who can he tempt? Allah says, Inna ja'alna shayateen awliya alilladhina la yu'minun. We have indeed made the devils close allies to those who do not believe. So now we know who doesn't... So, when someone is a disbeliever, he is out from Allah's clan. Once somebody is out of Allah's clan, he has to be in another clan. And the other clan is that of a shaitan. It cannot be uh, in between, in neutral, oh, I'm not here, I'm not there. No, you are out of Allah, you are in with a shaitan. For example. A shaitan, all this drug cartel, those killers and all, even if they put the, the biggest cross on their chest, or the biggest Quran on their head, or the biggest Torah on their head, if they are not believers as Allah wants, with our human fallibility, i.e. we commit sins, things like that, we are humans, but we repent and we keep going back. The reason being is this, as soon as we commit a sin, we have stepped out from the party of Allah. We're not disbelievers, but in matters of sins, we have stepped out. Repentance meaning return back within the party of Allah. And as long as you are of the party of Allah, you sin, you come out of the party of Allah, you don't disbelieve, but in actions you get, you, that's what I mean, you, you, you disaction, so to speak, and then you get the sins, and then you realize by disobeying you have done what a shaitan would want you to, and then you go back to Allah and you seek forgiveness, Allah forgives you so that you stay in his party. And this is very, very interesting and extremely important. You see, the jinn that heard the Qur'an, 
used to get tricked by a shaitan to do his bidding. They used to help him misguide humans while thinking that they were doing good. Why? Because a shaitan lied to them. But once they heard the Quran, they realized that the shaitan not only was dishonest with them, but they actually call him with the most belittling terms. Safihuna. A Safi is the one who doesn't think. He is so stupid, so dumb, so simpleton, so idiot. That's how the jinn referred to a shaitan and the lies he did that for them. You see, he scares those who ask him for safeguard and protection. He whispers directly in the ears or the hearts of those who seek his help. The reason people never succeed is simple, because whatever he whispers to them is never good, even if he sugarcoat it or he beautify it. You see, he comes to you and he says, you know what? Oh, look at that girl, how sexy she is. Come on, spend good time with her, good time. And that's it, it becomes good time, sexy, have fun, party, party the night away only to figure out the next day you wake up you have slept with someone problems have you got pregnant and now you have a child who doesn't have a father the man sleeps with so many women until he loses the sense of being loyal and when he gets married it's very difficult for them to be loyal why because when they were young they abused their sexuality and loyalty to them has disappeared shaitan took it away today that they are married they cannot stay on the right path. There is always a price a human will pay for following a shaitan. You can never ever follow a shaitan and stay safe. Unless and until you repent and you truly repent to Allah and then you do good deeds. The good deeds we do are to build new habits so that we never ever go back to what a shaitan wants from that. Anyone who deals with a shaitan will never ever get good results, not in this life, not in the hereafter. And that's why magic is a pure lie, because it's a trick a shaitan to string people with and that he cannot give them what they want. Do you think if a magician had a real magic, he'll ask you 20 pounds or 20 dollars for a spell? Why doesn't he go and put a spell on the director of a bank and get a million dollars in no time? Why doesn't this magician go and put a spell on the president of the United States for all that matter? Why doesn't he go to the queen of the world or the most beautiful woman in the world and put a spell on her and marry her and put an end to his miserable poverty? Why is he charging you 20 pounds to put a spell from, for someone else not to get married? What is the purpose of that? Where is the logic in our minds? Why can't people think? If a magician could give you what you want, why doesn't give himself what he wants? Knowing that all magicians will ask you for payment before they give you the spell. There is not a magician that will tell you, keep the money with you. If my spell doesn't work, money by guarantee. Not a thing. The moment you walk in, the first thing they take away from you is money. Money, 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 money. That's because that's what it is for them. It's a job. And they do a living. They make a living on the back of the stupid and idiots who go to them. Now let's leave the band of the jinn who have heard the Quran and what they told us. And let's carry on a little bit with what they said about this a shaitan. Because they will reveal to us certain things from the unseen world. And that thing that is in the unseen world, when it comes to us, it helps us understand that world which we cannot see. The world of the jinn. They said that, وَأَنَّهُمْ ظَنُّوا كَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ And that the humans, talking to the jinn, yeah? They say, and that the humans have thought just as you, the jinn, thought. Subhanallah, the jinn use us as example for their own people. What did our humans believe, Mr. Jinn, that the, they said, that Allah would not send anyone, will not revive on judgment day, anyone. So that means the jinn themselves 
also didn't believe that Allah will resurrect them. So now the jinns that have listened to the Quran know for a fact that Allah will resurrect us. And then they're going to tell them what I told you earlier on. And we have for so many centuries, for so long, touched the heaven. Why? So that they, before they used to spy, but when the Quran started, when the Quran came down, the jinn would go closely to the heaven, to the lowest heaven that is close to us, and they get as close as they can to spy. But now that the Quran has come down, they had a problem. Their problem is, and we closely touch the heaven, but now we found it full of fierce guards and flaming fires. Allah had placed angels all around the lower heaven. Any jinn or any shaitan that, close, that gets close to heaven either gets killed by the flaming fires or chased away by fierce guards. So there is a war going on every single minute of the day where the jinn try to spy and the angels are there killing and stopping them. The jinn now are going to explain to their people that what we used to do before no longer works now. They say, We used to before sit as close as possible to these heavens for us to listen. But now, whoever listens or tries to steal something shall find a flame in ambush and in wait, meaning anyone who steals a piece of information shall be killed. Yes, shall be killed. So what did the jinn do? They learned their lesson and they stopped going to the heaven to steal information. And with that, all the lies that the charlatans tell you are no longer influenced by the jinn, but just pure uh, information that the charlatan makes up of his own pocket. The jinn carry on. وَأَنَّا لَا نَدْرِي أَشَرٌ أُرِيدَ بِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْ أَرَادَ بِهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ رَشَدًا But nowadays we have absolutely no knowledge if bad is intended for those on earth or that their Lord intends good for them because the jinn cannot spy anymore. So when a jinn tells a magician, oh, there is that, or something good is going to happen, or something bad, they lie. Because they just say, they have no idea what Allah wants for earth. Is it good or evil? The jinns, the jinn, aren't all evil. Really. Some of them are evil. But a huge number, the, the biggest number of them aren't evil. It's only a small portion of them, a shaitan and a small group of him that are evil compared to the number of the jinn. Just like us humans, the huge number of humans, we're not evil. Yes, we have a small minority, the cartel, the thieves, yeah, things like that. But the big majority, we're not evil. That's why our jails are far less. We have less. In a whole town, you have a small jail. They said, وَأَنَّا مِنَّا الصَّالِحُونَ وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكَ And of us are those who are righteous. And of us are those who are less than that. Some of us are good, some of them aren't good. Just like, and then they say, كُنَّا طَرَائِقَ قِدَدًا We all are of different, different denominations. Would you believe it? The jinn, they have sikh. They have Hindus, they have Buddhists, they have uh, Muslims, they have Christians, they have Jews, they have atheists, they have exactly like us humans. But also they have those who are Muslim. And you can find all this information in Surat Al-Jinn, that the Surah number 72, from 1 to 11, that's the entire Surah. Read it. The message of the Jinn is already there. And nowhere in that they say we work with magicians and charlatans. No way. What a shaitan promised Allah on that day when he disobeyed to yield to Adam, 
He made a pledge. That pledge was as follows. By your might and glory, I shall surely misguide them all. That is, his pledge is to misguide us all. I want to clarify one thing here before I move on. When Allah spoke to a shaitan in the story of Adam, he said, he said, I said, he said, there was not a direct speech between Allah and shaitan like he did with Musa. It's not like a shaitan was at one end and Allah was at the other end and the conversation took place. It didn't happen like that. All it was is that Allah reveals to a shaitan and a shaitan say and Allah answers just like for example when Musa asked the children of Israel to slaughter a cow they say something Allah hears them and reveals something as an answer Qalu, they said Qala, Allah says and Musa was the in between he received the revelation he tells it to them the same thing for a shaitan a shaitan says something allah hears him allah reveals to jibril jibril delivers to a shaitan exactly like it happened before but anyhow a shaitan swore to allah that he shall misguide us all and then he made an exception a very strange uh, exception he goes Illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlasin, except those subjects, those humans, those from them who are purified. And this is in Surah Sad 38, Ayah 82. The one who is purified is the one who follows what Allah has descended. If it's a Jew, they must follow the Torah, not the Talmud. If he is Christian, they must follow the Bible, not what the scholars have said. If he is Muslim, they must follow the Quran, not the Sunnah, the Hadith, and what the other scholars have said. The Quran. On Judgment Day, the only book that shall have value is the Quran, for us at least. So who will a shaitan choose? And this is extremely important because there is a huge misunderstanding about an issue. People believe, we Muslims believe, just like the Jew do, a Christian do, we believe that, or people believe, the Muslim believe, that Allah has appointed an angel and a shaitan for every human being. And what has reinforced this belief are hadith narratives. There are hadiths that say that a shaitan, our shaitan, each human being has a shaitan. It even goes into details as to when we sleep at night, a shaitan sleeps inside our nose. This is strange, but hey, that's what the hadith narratives tell you. Why do you eat with the right hand? So that the shaitan doesn't eat with you. Why do you say bismillah when you eat? So that the shaitan doesn't eat with you. Why do you wear your clothes with the right hand? So that the shaitan doesn't wear your clothes with you. So, so the idea of a shaitan being in direct contact with us on a daily basis is well established in the hadith world. When in fact the Quran doesn't say this. Al-Quran says the only people that a shaitan can affect are those who no longer are in the party of Allah. Those who have abandoned his religion. As for anyone else who is doing their best to be a good believer, be that a Jew, Christian, Hindu, Sikh, anyone. Allah will not give authority to a shaitan over that person. And nowhere in the Quran that Allah says that he has appointed a jinn for every human being. This is a lie. You having a jinn and an angel on each side is a lie. You having your shaitan and uh, an angel to one side, usually the, the angel is on the right, the shaitan is on the evil, is wrong. It's a lie. Sadly, in Tom and Jerry, sometimes one day I saw a cartoon and uh, Tom, the cat, wanted to do something. The angel on his right told him to do something, to eat Jerry, <laughs> not to eat Jerry, but the devil on his left said to eat Jerry. And, that, and that's how this concept starts. What it is, is simple. There is you, the human, body, uh, human being, the body, the physical body. There is the soul that's inside you. And there is the shaitan who, work on, uh, who works on the people who are not 
in the party of Allah and of it. When a shaitan whispers to you and you do the act, you are responsible for the act. That's why on judgment day, Allah will hold you responsible for the act. So if, for example, let's say someone fornicates, all right? That's a disobedience, that's a, that's a sin. On judgment day, no one can come to Allah and says, when they ask him, why did you fornicate? No one is going to say, you know, it's shaitan who whispered to me. Why? Because Allah has told us that the shaitan is our enemy. So using a shaitan as an excuse will not stand. You cannot tell him, you know what? The devil who was on my left whispered that to me. It will not stand. You will be responsible for your action. Our job is when a shaitan whispers to us, we block it. Why? Because he whispers. He uses words to misguide us. And Allah uses words to guide us. So when you receive the words of shaitan as a revelation, because he whispers to you, you must use the words of Allah to counter. But in the first place, if you are close to Allah, a shaitan is nowhere close to you. The huge majority of people on earth do not have a direct interaction with the shaitan. Would you believe that? So how do they sin? It's our souls because we, have, we are fallibles. We are weak. That's why we sin. Here is how what Allah says about this issue. He says, Allah orders Muhammad to narrate something to us which in the Quran today is narrated. What is that thing, ya Allah, that we should pay attention to? Allah uses this expression for something that is extremely important and a few times in the Quran he has used it he has used it about the two children who killed uh, one killed the other and he, he mentioned in few other uh, places and declare upon them the very important statement of okay what is this statement what I, what's this that is so important to Allah of the one, a person to whom we granted our ayat. A person that received the book of Allah and is a good believer and he's following it and he's fine. And then at one point, that person decided to slip away from that Quran or that Torah or that Bible. I.e. they stopped following the revelation what Allah has revealed in the book. To us is the Quran. As soon as the person abandons Al-Quran and being in the party of Allah, فَأَتْبَعَهُ الشَّيْطَانِ A shaytan sends someone to follow him. A shaytan sends another shaytan who works for him. To go to that person who no longer is in the party of Allah, فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَوِينَ And he becomes the person of the misguided. You can read about this in Surah Al-A'raf, the Surah number 7, Ayah 175 and 176. The Ayah clearly states that as long as the human is by Allah's law, that the, be that the Torah, the Gospel, the Quran, whatever book he revealed, he is safe to a certain degree from a shaitan. But the moment the person abandons the book of Allah, the Quran, or again any other book, straight away a shaitan. It's almost like we have <laughs> it's like it's almost like we have a green light on top of our head, a red light. And imagine humans we like we walk in darkness and we all have green lights on top of us. A shaitan sees from there, oh my god, all of them are green. Nothing to do today. Oh, come on, guys. Nothing red today. Uh, oh, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is one red. You, go. You see that red there? Go. He's no longer in Allah's party. The other one comes there, spends two minutes to figure out what you're doing. And then once he figures out why you have the red light on top of your head and why you have abandoned the law of Allah, that's it. He will start working on you to make sure that you will be a deviated. There is nowhere in the Quran that states that you have a jinn or a shaitan that is 24 hours with you. Uh, that's a lie, but sadly. Uh, now, I want to mention something. As hard as it is. In the third century, 
when Muslims opened up to other nations. We have the, now in Baghdad, we had different people from different nations, Romans, Greek, from all kind of the world come there for different reasons, for business, for studies, for whatever it is. Muslims found themselves, or the sheikhs at least, found themselves in, uh, just facing a big problem. That problem was as follows. Musa, he had so many miracles under his belt. The stuff, the hand, he did this, the, the water, he opened the sea, he did. So the Jews were extremely proud of what Musa has accomplished. The Christians, the same thing for Jesus. Hey, reviving the dead is nothing, it's miraculous. And of course, what he could do, he takes a piece of uh, uh, clay, forms it like a bird, he blows in it, and the guy flies like a bird. That's it, it's a bird flying. The people of Abraham, they believe that Abraham slaughtered animals and Allah gave it. So each of, or at least all the prophets had something with them. The followers and the believers used to boost their prophets. Our sheikhs looked and they saw Muhammad was an orphan. He doesn't have any miracle, nothing, 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 nothing. So what they did, they did something extremely evil. Their intention was good, as they say, but it's not good. And then for that intention, they went and created a bunch of lies that has sadly cost us a lot. What did our sheikhs and our scholars back then? Every miracle that any uh, other prophet had, anything, 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 they invented a lie and they attached it to Rasulullah as his miracles. They say, you know what? Musa in the Quran, when the children of Israel got very thirsty, Allah orders Musa to hit with his staff, with his cane, rocks, and then 12 fountains of water would spring out of the earth, and the children of Israel would drink from there. In that a miracle, sure it is. So, Muslims, how, how, how can we make Muhammad better than Musa? The scholars scratch their head. What can we say that would beat Musa? They go, oh yes, we got it. They said, uh, in one of the expeditions, they were in the plain desert. No water was for the army of the messenger of Allah. And people went to the prophet and they cried, Ya Rasulullah, we don't have more water, we're going to die. And then the prophet did what? He just dingled his hand and pure, fresh, sweet water started running from in between his fingers. The entire army is like what the Prophet Muhammad became a, a tap, like a sink tap, like water, that's it. And then the entire army drank from it. They took showers, their animals, all this coming from the hand of the Prophet. You see, Musa had to beat the rock with the stuff. The Prophet Muhammad did it, have it coming out of his hand. That's how miraculous Muhammad was. <gasps> okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then they invented so many things. They say Jesus had turned the stones into bread and water into wine. Of course, Muhammad has to beat Jesus. What can we do? Yes, yes, yes. In one of the expedition, when the kuffar of Mecca and their allies wanted to invent Al Medina, and they had this big embargo, the Muslims were extremely exhausted and tired, and they didn't have food. So the Prophet told one of the companions, a poor man, he goes, uh, Do you have anything at home that you eat? And the man says, Yes. The Prophet said to him, Go at home, take your goat, slaughter it. And uh, as you cook it, don't do anything until I come. The man goes home and she goes, uh, we need to cook that animal. And she goes, look, we only have that animal. We don't have any. He goes, that's what the prophet said. She goes, oh, really? Okay, since the prophet said, let's do it. The woman cooks it and the prophet comes home and he sits in front of that pot. And then he orders them, bring the people and let them enter by 10. And the prophet was the servant. He would serve, each one brings their plate and the prophet would serve them. Now narratives say the entire Medina with the army and everybody ate from that pot. And the prophet then when he finished, they said as if no food has left that pot. He blessed it and it became so abundant, more than what Jesus did when he turned rocks into food and water into wine. There is not, I can, I can go and tell you like it's, it's endless. 
all what they tell you the prophets miracles are nothing but lies to defeat the other prophets one of such lies is the following Allah had given Suleiman a kingdom that no other human can have meaning the possibility of having what Suleiman had is not there however we have a hadith that is in Bukhari and Muslim which means this hadith is far more authentic than the oxygen itself the hadith I'm gonna just say it in English to save on time here Mr. Abu Huraira reports that the messenger of Allah said Ifrit Ifrit is a powerful demon remember the one of Suleiman who told him I can bring you the throne of the queen before you stand from your sitting that's Ifrit powerful very rebellious and it's a demon he goes this is the prophet Muhammad he goes he that Ifrit that demon very nasty one came to me yesterday to interrupt my prayers in one of the hadiths also he this uh, jinn or uh, this shaitan had a torch a lit torch and the prophet was standing and the jinn came in front of him he was like teasing him like i want to burn you with it all right that's why he says uh, he came to me yesterday to interrupt my prayer but allah gave me power over him remember allah promised Suleiman that he will not give this kingdom to anyone after him but in this hadith he says Allah gave me power over him and this just with these few words we pictured Allah as a God who doesn't keep his promises carry on so I seized him Prophet Muhammad seizes the jinn from his neck from the throat and intended to tie him in one of the pillars of the mosque in order that you might all look at him <gasps> a human's gonna look at the jinn but that's impossible but the hadith says yes he, he nearly did that and then the hadith carries on and then he says ah but I remembered the dua and the request of my brother Suleiman who said God or oh Lord gift me a kingdom that cannot be gifted to anyone else after me and then the, uh, Muhammad said so I just chased him away and I say may Allah curse the person who lied this hadith even if they say it's Bukhari a Muslim and I say may Allah curse the liar who put it all this hadith was put is just say he was better than Suleiman even though Suleiman had asked to be given a gift a, a gift of a kingdom that none after him can have but in our Muhammad, no, he did have it. He grabbed the jinn with his hand to the throat in one of a hadith until I felt the saliva of his mouth on my hand. He felt the saliva of this jinn between the, my fingers, like the index and the thumb, because that's how he got him by the throat. And if it weren't for the request of my brother Suleiman, I would have tied him to the pillar of the masjid and so that the children of Al Madina would get him by the rope and drag him around and have fun of him. And this hadith is reported by Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the teacher of Al Bukhari and Muslim, and also in Fath al Bari and a few others. And the hadith is authentic. You see how the lies are? Al Albani also reported this hadith and authenticated and all that kind of stuff. All this is a huge, huge lie. I will now now we have an idea what we get from all this the story of Suleiman all this that is Suleiman was an honorable king and a prophet he made a, who inherited his dad he came to this world with a golden spoon in his mouth he in he lived a life with the king uh, his father and he asked of Allah after he inherited the kingdom of his dad it already is fascinating but he asked it more and Allah granted him more but in one condition Suleiman had said that whatever Allah gives him none else after him can be given that all right so when someone says that the Prophet Muhammad managed to catch a jinn and he did this we know he is a liar because the agreement is that Allah gives to Suleiman what he will never ever give to somebody else and to beat Suleiman also as well I forgot to say this to beat Suleiman they said even though Suleiman was given the control over the wind 
so much so that a wind will travel the distance of one month in few hours of the morning or few hours in the evening, Prophet Muhammad was given more than that. Not only he could travel from Mecca to Jerusalem, but he traveled from Jerusalem to the seventh heaven. There is no amount of wind that can beat that distance. And of course, this is a lie as well. The Prophet has never been not to Jerusalem and not to the seventh heaven. And Suleiman wins. Why does he win? Because of what Allah says in the Quran. At the time of the Prophet Muhammad, something peculiar happened. When Al Quran came, it addressed the children of Israel as well as anyone else. And it came, the Quran, to correct so many things that are wrong in the children of Israel, in the Torah, the way they understand it, the words that they changed, and things like that. Instead of the children of Israel studying what is inside the Quran and see what it is and see how it can help them or whatever, or instead of going back to the Torah, what did they do? They started telling stories about the kingdom of Suleiman to distract the other Jews. And this is exactly when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, that is Surah number 2 in Ayah 101, 102 as well. And they, the Jews, followed what the devils spread about the kingdom of Suleiman. And this is a problem. Instead of concentrating on what Allah says, people waste their time listening to another source about another topic. By the way, even though the ayah in Arabic says Ashayatin, but who are meant here, they are the human deviated ones, not the jinn. Because the jinn will never ever speak to humans. Unless, of course, it's the shaitan, and all he can do is just whisper and hope that you listen to his whispers. But here it says, the children of Israel, the three tribes that were at the time of the messenger, followed what the shayateen, who are the priests and their leaders, used to tell them about the kingdom of Suleiman. That practice is still alive and alive today. If you ever go to the promised land, to Jerusalem, you will hear the rabbi of the children of Israel, of the Jews, telling them stories about what Suleiman did and how he built the temple and the ring of Suleiman, who is today portrayed in the Star of David. That Star of David really does not, even though it's called the Star of David, but it does not represent the Star of David, for David didn't have a star. But what it represents is the ring of Suleiman. The sad, other sad thing is this, the big majority of translations, and I am talking about almost everyone who translated this ayah, made the very dangerous and mortal mistake. And that mistake is they took the word shayateen, which usually refers to the disbelieving genes, the horrible uh, bad genes, and they said that here it is the jinn who are whispering to humans when in fact Allah is talking about humans, not the jinn. Allah in the Quran has a way of defining things. Anything that is harmful to a human being, Allah calls it shaitan. Anyone. So if we have a sheikh who misrepresents, uh, misteaches people, lies to people, in the sight of Allah, even though he's a human being, but his actions are the actions of shaitan. The word shaitan means has gone beyond the limits of good. He is now bathing in the evil. That's what it means. How can a human being become a shaitan? It's simple. Step out from the, law, uh, the party of Allah and you're gonna fall in the party of a shaitan. When you fall in the party of shaitan, you become shaitan because now you are at the service of a shaitan. Allah has mentioned to us in the Quran about these people, 
the hypocrites, the people of the book, and these things. And when it is said to them, do believe, as the people have believed. And this is in al Madina. Now the Jews and the hypocrites and those who don't want to believe, قالوا, they say, are we going to believe as these idiots and imbeciles did? Those are stupid who can't use the, the thinking quickly. Allah answers them back in the Quran. Yet they are the idiots, but they do not realize it. And when they, these people, that is to say that, from the Jews, from the Arabs, from the people of Al-Madina, when they collide and they face in the streets the people who have believed, they would tell them, oh, I am a believer. It's just a conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah, do you believe? Yeah, alhamdulillah. Or they speak the way believers speak. But when they are secluded and away, from the believers, they speak to their shaitans, i.e. the evil leaders, to the rabbis, to, the, to, to, to their uh, patrons, to the leaders, uh, to the sheikhs, to their people there. They talk and Allah calls them to their shaitan. They said to them, inna ma'akum, inna ma mustazi'un. We are with you. We're just amusing ourselves. We're just making fun of these people. You can read about this in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah 2, from Ayah 13 to 14. As you can see it here, Allah is referring to the evil friends and the leaders of these hypocrites as shaitan, devils. And that's why in the surah of Sulaiman, and they followed what the shaitan, i.e. their shaitanic leaders, the rabbi and things like that, invent on the kingdom of Sulaiman. Elsewhere in Al-Quran, Allah also establishes another truth, that there is certain relationship that exists between the shaitan of the jinn and the human being. But this relationship is one way. They whisper to each other some kind of speech. They decorate their speech to misguide humans. That's all there is to it. But can we whisper to a shaitan? No, we cannot. But can a shaitan and his party whisper to us? Sure. And we turn their whispers into actions. And by doing that, we encourage them to become more evil. And the more evil we get in our actions, the more evil they get in their whispers. And that's why people in the crime, uh, the, the, they start with something slow and then they go. The more you listen to them, the more they increase. The more you listen until you get to a point where uh, you are completely messed up and then they abandon you. Elsewhere, Allah has defined sickness and disease as a shaitan. He calls a sickness and a disease that harms a human being, Allah calls it as a shaitan. For example, when Allah speaks about Ayyub, and this is also in Surah 38 from Ayah 41, Allah says, وَذْكُرْ عَبْدَنَا Ayyub," And mention our subservient, the human that we created, Ayyub. All of us have heard of Ayyub, or as the Jews call him, Jab. إِذْ نَادَى أَرَبَّهُ When he called upon his Lord, he made dua to his Lord. What is this dua? He said, أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ بِنُصْبٍ وَعَذَابٍ A shaitan has touched me with something that is tiring me and it's hurting me and it is tormenting me. Subhanallah. Ayyub, a messenger of Allah, is touched by a shaitan? Guess what? The Salafi sect, this, this deviated cult, they said, yes, Ayyub had actually a shaitan put a bad spell on him. Ayyub, a messenger of Allah. It's impossible. But that's what it is. They said that to prove that magic is true, when in fact it is not. Even uh, as I said earlier on, and Nawawi and the other ones, they say magic has a real body and is tangibly contagious. All that is a lie. Of course, they wrote it in their books and they promoted it at their time and the government supported it because they were close allies to the government. Hey, there is not much we can do. But all we can say is explain as I am doing here 
And at the end of the talk, you formulate your own brain. You want to carry on listening to uh, believe in magic? You and your magic. And on judgment day, you answer to Allah for that. But Ayyub called upon his Lord and he says, a disease has touched me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you see, Allah used the term of Masaniya shaitan. The shaitan has touched me. And the shaitan here is the disease who touched Ayyub with a stubborn distress. He distressed him a lot. And that disease became a, 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 like a torment, a, a, a torture to Ayyub. Elsewhere in Al-Quran, Allah explains to us that the kind of disease that has hit Ayyub was a skin disease. Imagine somebody who has a continuous rush uh, of, for years and his skin hurts him, his clothing, when he wears them hurts him, if he sleeps it hurts and all that kind of stuff. So that Allah called a shaitan. What was the cure after Ayyub made that dua? Allah ordered him, Urqud birijlik, beat the ground with your foot. So uh, Ayyub was standing somewhere and Allah tells him, beat with your foot the ground, hit it. As if you are looking for something. Ayyub suddenly did that. And as he was beating the ground with his foot, ha, the, the, the earth sprang with a fountain of water. The water came from the, the earth. When the water came from the earth, Allah whispered, uh, not whispered, revealed to him, هَذَا مُغْتَسَلٌ This, i.e. the water that has gushed and it's just coming up to you, is a washing for you. It is cool and also a drink. And Ayyub washed his body and guess what? All that shaitanic disease that was on him left his noble body and he became sane and everything was fine. So when Allah says, and they followed what the devils spread about the kingdom of Suleiman, we understand that what these people were on about is the, is the priests and their leaders, not the, like shaitan, the jinn and things like that. Now, this, what uh, these rabbis were spreading, or these evil people were spreading on the kingdom of Suleiman, had two, uh, two reasons. One is to take people away from what Allah has revealed. That's one. And two, it's to let the children of Israel a dream that if you want your kingdom restored, you have got to do what Suleiman has done. And what Suleiman has done, according to these devil humans, is that he was a magician. And in order for you to gain back your kingdom, build the temple XXX, you need to find the elements of that magic of Suleiman and practice it. This now is going to take us into the story of what they call Harut and Marut in, Babilia, in uh, Bab uh, Babylon, in Babylon times. And the reason why I call them Harut and Marut because A, Allah named them in Al-Quran, and the two, and this is a strange thing as you shall see. They say Harut and Marut were two angels that Allah sent from heaven to come down to a human to teach them magic. And this, what, uh, what I will speak inshallah in upcoming number seven talk, this is believed in 100% by everybody. Out there, you ask him, Sheikh or no Sheikh, they will tell you, yes, these people are two angels that Allah sent down. And this is so, so wrong. Because Allah never, ever sends angels to teach evil to humans so that humans blaspheme. It's, it, it, this is not how Allah works. And this is, inshallah, what we shall see. We'll talk about the beautiful world of Harut and Marut. And we're going to take a trip in the Babylon time. And we will see why Allah referred to Babylon when the children of Israel had gone way past the Babylonian time. It's really mind-boggling. We are about almost there. So please bear with me. Uh, the, the big chunk has gone and we've got a few uh, other couple talks maybe inshallah and this topic will be wrapped up again this is your brother abdus salam and uh, off to page or to part number seven about the two angels 
they are not angels, but for now, let's say they are, we say the angels of uh, Babylon, Harut, and Marut, and what kind of magic did they teach to the humans, and why magic is always or go, always goes around uh, dividing a man from his wife. Why, 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 why this? Why, why, why not making a bank account fat or inventing a gold making machine or something? Why is it always uh, separating between people? In the next talk, inshallah, I will explain why uh, this kind of uh, crooked and weird belief. Again, this is your brother Abdul Salam, and I just finished part six and after part seven. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.